first GeForce RTX 40 series graphics card without 8-pin or 12 DHPW connector has launched in China. NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 has dropped in pricing as AMD launches their 7800 XT. First, Intel origin generation CPU has been tested in Cinebench 2024. And lastly, the pricing for the Intel 4th generation desktop lineup has been leaked. This is Tech Track. Okay, so firstly, we have Asus China has launched their RTX 4070. I believe it's Zhuang Xin Xing. I could be spelling it terribly wrong i'm sorry about that but as you can see this is the first gpu without as you can see right over here it has literally no it has a different proprietary connector and i think there was it was leaked before in the in the expo so obviously this was revealed that it has no power connector rather it has a certain kind of pcie connector which i wouldn't say it's a pcie connector it is more like a well something like pcie but not exactly pcie it's called something else we don't know for sure, but but as you can see, it's a it's a pro pro proprietary connector for the RTX 4070 that will be powering up compared to the power connector that is delivered. The usual GPUs has eight pin or twelve VHPW connectors, but this one doesn't. So I believe Xeon Sing Shin uh, character is this. I'm not an anime fan, so I can't really tell if that is a well known character to me. But yeah, that is the aesthetics they're going for with this GPU here, as you can tell. And as you can tell, there are literally no power connectors. Usually the power connectors are in front rough right here, right? But there isn't any. We can see that proprietary connector for the power. So yeah, it's the first GPU to have this such kind of power connector, which is nice. I really like that because that really helps with the cable management here. But also you would need certain motherboards to support such GPU. And I believe Asus has already made such GPU or I would say motherboard, but I think they haven't launched it yet, so we have to wait for that. For now, they have, la they have launched this GPU here, but, but the question is, where's the motherboard, right? You can't just use this GPU like uh, as it is, right? You, need, you would need the motherboard, so I, have, I think we have to wait for the motherboard to be launched, and then might be this GPU might be usable at least. That's for sure. Next up, we have something huge. As you can see, this is the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4070 WinForce, and look at the pricing. $549, $50 less compared to the MSRP, which was $599, basically $600. So, why are we seeing this kind of pricing now? Well, we already know RTX RX 7800 XT has been launched already, and the pricing for that is $500 USD. So, obviously, NVIDIA is terrified because, you know, RTX 4070 is not worth $600. We've already told that before, but now, as the RX 7800 XT has been launched with $500, we are seeing NVIDIA dropping the pricing, and rightfully so. Also, as you can see, new way the pricing for the same GPU has dropped down to 549 And for the Zotac model, which is probably the better-looking card, even though it's a small, small card, usually Zotac makes such cards. So, as you can tell, it's also dropping price at 549 And in Newegg, the same card going down at 549 So, RTX 4070 going down at 549 which is very much justified because, I mean, without... You know, dropping the price they won't be able to sell it but still there's a question that comes into your mind is it really worth 549 even after dropping because let me tell you rx 7800 xt is still performing very good compared to the rtx 4070 in some cases defeating it i believe on average it's winning four uh, percent even though it's you could say it's on par it's still winning in the standard restoration so i would say it's uh, RX 7800 XT is better deal, but if you consider DLSS or better ray tracing, maybe you could consider this car. Next time we have something interesting in Billy Billy forum here, and as you can see, this is the ES ECSM official has posted this, and well, we have a certain CPU clocked at 5.3 megahertz or 5.3 gigahertz, I should say, and well, what that what CPU is that? Well, as you can see, it's the Cinebench 2024 version. That's interesting. We haven't really got 2024 version yet, but there we have it. It's the i5-14600K, a 14 core 20 threads uh, processor here, clocking at 3.5 at the base clock and boosting at 5.3, we just saw. And as you can see in the, in the CPU multi-core test, we're getting 1430 and in the CPU at 124. And now the scores look very much smaller compared to the 20, Cinebench R23 or Cinebench 20, 22, I don't know, but yeah. Uh, this score looks smaller because you know it's a newer Cinebench 2024. So I guess it's a 
we will have a different perspective in terms of scoring. But anyway, in the CPU, we're getting 1430, and in CPU, 124. We can't really compare that to anything because, you know, Cinebench R24 hasn't been compared to other CPUs yet, or maybe they have, but we don't really have the score right now. But yeah, uh, this is the score we're looking at for the i5-4600K. This is the first test, test of course. We do have some comparisons here, but it doesn't really give you the full picture because it's in, it isn't comparing with the, well, the i5 third generation processors. So it's kind of hard to tell how much uplift we got, get from the i5 14600K compared to the 13600K, right? So we still have to wait for that, I guess. But we are seeing also two other scores here, which is the Intel Core i9 14900KF getting 2239 in multi-core and i7 14700K getting 2068 in multi-core. So not a b bad uh, score here, which is true. And as you can see, the Apple M1 Ultra is right over there. So that's interesting. Even the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X is also there with the Threadripper Pros or just the Threadripper 2990. It's a very old CPU there, so yeah, it, it, it isn't really a thing to really compare, but we have the i5 4600K, and I guess we have to wait for the 3600K to be uh, tested with the Cinebench R24, or maybe uh, you can also compare the Intel i5 4600K and the Cinebench R23 and then figure out, but we still have to wait for the leaks to come, or the CPU to launch, but for now, this is the leak we're getting. We also got the CPU Z score here, and as you can see for the same, well, for the same CPU here, and as you can see in the single core test, this is the single core, this is a multi core. The single core test is giving you 862.2. I believe 862.2 is for the Intel Core i5 4600K and the bottom one, which is the i9 12900K. So we have that comparison at least that kind of tells you that, yeah, in, in, in single core, it's pretty good. 868 versus 831 compared to the i9 4900K. But then again, it's the 4900K. What about 3900K? Again, we have to wait for that. In the multi-core, we're getting 10,249, which is expected lower than that 12900K because it has more cores, so it's understandable. And lastly, we have Momomo underscore US, and only could just leak something interesting here. Well, as you can see right here, 4900K pricing listed, exactly, 833.99, so basically 834. And it's a bit pricier compared to the 3900K, as you can see, 808 versus 834, so yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a bit, a bit pricey, but then again, in the performance-wise, it should perform better because, you know, it's a refresh model. Same goes for the 4900K F 795 compared to the 3900F, which is 778. Not a huge boost, so I'll take it. Also, we got the 4700K at 597, so we look into the 3700K, we're looking at 583. So, we're getting a bit of a boost here, 597 versus 583 a bit pricey as, it, as i said on average it should be around like three to four percent pricier on average also the 4700 kf right here 55 559 560 you could say similar deal so that's right there if you compare that to 3700 kf which is 538 so i think it's a 30 dollar increase or not even 30 dollar 20 dollar increase i should say but yeah not a not a huge price increase there but Again, the performance should be better. I feel like the 4700K of KF should be better because you not only get more performance, you get more cores with the... Oh, of course, the efficiency cores have been increased. So I think 4700KF or K should be the better deal here compared to the pricing, of course, because you get more cores, also increase in pricing. So I feel I feel like that is more of a justified point of view there. The 4600K is $453. So not bad because, you know, 12700K is all the 447. So it's not a huge price increase. So I'll take that. I'll take that as a good deal. Or I should say 46, not 47. It's like 436. We're comparing the 12700s. So I didn't miss. I missed that. My bad. But yeah, still not a huge price increase there. I wouldn't say. So maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Who knows? Also, 4600K. I've got leaks right here in the pricing. 415. Even though these are very pricey, I mean, again, it's a Canadian dollar, so you need to keep that in mind. But yeah, 415 is not bad either. So yeah, basically the whole pricing got leaked for the 14th generation Raptor Lake refresh CPUs. And the pricing doesn't seem bad, that's true. But, you know, it depends on the country. If the taxes are high, that's going to be a bit problematic, right? Yeah. In the USA, that, that might not be the problem. But in other regions, maybe like Australia, it would be a bit pricey. That's for sure. But either way, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because there will be more news coming for the 14th generation 
leaks and all and we obviously will get more cinebench r24 leaks so we have to wait for that until then i'll see you next time